dry bones my king God when we were wretched and undone dead in our sin my Lord Jesus God that uh, you called out to those dry bones my Lord God that you would breathe life into us my Lord Jesus and God now let us to grab a hold what it is that you have done for us God let us grab a hold God of what it is that you're telling us to do my Lord Jesus and God you're telling us to go back out to those fields God those valleys my Lord Jesus that are full of dry bones, God, those streets, my Lord God, those alleys, God, those trenches, my Lord Jesus, those gutters, my God. And Lord, that you are calling us to prophesy your breath into those dry bones, my Lord Jesus. So God, allow us to get out there to be your hands and to be your feet, God. Allow us to get out there, God, to be your mouthpiece, my Lord Jesus. God, all you simply want us to do is show up, God. And if we show up, my Lord Jesus, there you are to show off, my Lord God. And Lord, you're going to do it. You're going to do the work through us, my Lord Jesus. But God, you want us there, my Lord. So God, allow our feet to hinder us no more, God. But to go where it is that you have called us and commanded us to go, God. Lord, allow our hearts, my Lord Jesus, to uh, 
to be hardened and no more, my Lord Jesus. And God, whether it's the molested or the molester, my Lord God, the rapist or the raped, my Lord Jesus. God, let us to reach out to them, my Lord God, and breathe life into their dry bones, my Lord Jesus. God, let us to get out there, my Lord God, to those who are, who are afflicted, my Lord Jesus. God, uh, let us to get out there, my Lord God, those who are mentally and emotionally, physically, spiritually, sexually, God, suffering, my Lord God. Let us to indeed get out there, my Lord Jesus, God, and begin to set people free, my Lord God. We thank you right now, my Lord Jesus, that yes, God, today we declare that there will be no valley with dry bones in front of us, my Lord God, because we will get out there and prophesy your breath, God into those dry bones my lord jesus and god we thank you that when we do our part god that you are always doing your part god so we prophesy that breath god that we know that that breath will enter into those dry bones lord and you've already declared it in your scripture god that those bones will begin to rattle my lord jesus and that people's lives will begin to shake my lord god that sin will roll away my lord god that the enemy will begin to flee my lord jesus and god that you will rise an army my lord god that the gates of hell shall not prevail my lord Lord. So God, we thank you right now that we will declare in our communities, God, in our cities, in our towns, God, that we will prophesy your breath and there will be no dry bones, my Lord God. For indeed there will be an army rising up to declare that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, God. That you are the God of the angel armies, my Lord Jesus. And God, we are here to say, send me, I'll go, show me the valley, and we will prophesy. So Lord, we thank you. We praise you and we love you. And all God's babies, his sons, his daughters, his children, they are declared in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And amen. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. You guys may be seated in the precious presence of Jesus Christ, man. He is amazing, is he not? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Guys, man, before we get going, man, it's uh, um, tomorrow, September 11th, man, so we, uh, we want to acknowledge and remember, praise the Lord, the uh, mighty men and women who uh, um, lost their lives on, on September 11th, man. We want to acknowledge the mighty men and women, man, who uh, freely and willingly gave up their lives, and we want to acknowledge those who uh, willingly and freely uh, fought for our lives, amen. So uh, uh, some had no choice but to be in those buildings and in those planes. Others uh, uh, um, that were in there, man, were heroes, even though they know that they were knew, knowing that they were about to die. They uh, they stood up to the calling, and it's absolutely amazing. And then we have uh, men and women, man, who uh, with bodies uh, dropping out of windows, man, uh, uh, stories high, man, were so willing to uh, get out of their police cars, their fire trucks, and do what it is that they had to do. So we just want to acknowledge them. And, and I just have a question. If there's any uh, uh, firefighters or police officers or military, can you guys please stand up right now just so that we could, uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> hallelujah. Thank you. And if you guys will remain standing, if you guys will just remain standing for a second, hallelujah. Father God, we just thank you, Jesus. God, we praise you, Lord. God, we thank you for these mighty men and these mighty women, God, who we are blessed and honored, God, to have in our family right here at Source Church, God. Lord, I just pray for blessings upon them, God, the families that they represent, Jesus, as, as they were so willing, my Lord God, through their life, God, to sacrifice it on the behalf of mankind, my Lord Jesus. God, we thank you, my Lord God, whatever branch it is that they are in, my Lord God, that they were willing to fight, God, that they were willing to sacrifice, God, that they were willing to save, my Lord Jesus. God, I just ask right now that you pour your blessings upon them, Lord, and we remember every man, woman, God, boy and girl, Jesus, who lost their lives in 9-11, my Lord Jesus. God, we thank you for those, God, that, that went in there, my Lord Jesus, to rescue, my Lord God. And my King, right now, Jesus, we just ask, God, that you Bless those families, God. Let them to know, Jesus, that those who have lost loved ones, my Lord Jesus, did not lose them in vain. Yeah. God, those, Jesus, who fought for the country after this and before this, my Lord God, those who, who were in or are going in with law enforcement and firefighting, my Lord Jesus, and God, that they are indeed the true American heroes, God. We love athletes, but God, that they're not the heroes, my Lord Jesus. <laughs> But God, those men and women, Jesus, who put their lives on the line, my Lord God, 
to save mankind, Jesus, and the struggles and the troubles that they are in. God, just like you going to the cross to save mankind. Lord Jesus, I just thank you for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all may be seated, and we salute you guys, and we thank you guys, and we honor you guys. Praise the Lord. Met a, a mighty man earlier, a man who uh, uh, is here with us tonight, or today, uh, who uh, helps out with Samaritan's Purse, and to God be the glory for him. And if you can stand up, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Getting ready, uh, most likely getting ready to go out to Texas, man, and then he's going to be uh, leading a team out there. So God is just so amazing with the people that he begins to build up, man. So we're blessed and honored to have you in the house with us today, man, and we know that God's going to do awesome things through you, and uh, praise God for that. And so continue to lift up our brothers and sisters, man, uh, in Texas. Continue to lift up uh, our brothers and sisters in, in, in Florida, Cuba, and, and all those uh, islands, man, that got hit. And we are praising the Lord. That's a, he did amazing things with that hurricane, with the, with the route that it took. But at the same time, we also have to continue to pray for those that are still in its path. Amen. And uh, we're going to be believing and receiving that, uh, that God's going to show off his glory even more. And it's going to straight rock our world in an insane way. Praise God. So I thank him for that. Uh, man, we just want to uh, say thank you to you guys, man, who went to the uh, uh, quarter auction on Friday night, uh, 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 Thursday, yeah, fr th Friday night. Yep, praise the Lord. So we thank you guys for that. We had the outreach in Columbia uh, last night, which was off the chain, man. Praise God. Uh, uh, Pastor Rob, man, straight killed it up there, man, and, and uh, uh, with his uh, music ministry, man, also preaching the word. It was absolutely phenomenal. Had those people uh, glued, but they were stuck like super glue. Hallelujah and an amen. You know what I mean? It was, it was just awesome, man. Praise God. Some of them cats didn't know what to think when the hip hop came on. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But it was awesome. <laughs> it was awesome. Praise God. It was killer, man. And uh, uh, Zadik, man, Tyler V. Praise the Lord, who is a part of MMOV Ministries, uh, uh, Drums at Liberty. Uh, praise God, uh, uh, our sister church down in Kittleville Hills. But he, uh, he, he uh, did ministry through music as well, and he straight killed it. And uh, if you've ever seen him perform, man, like he's all over the place all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? And he had a, a corded mic. And I was like, Lord, gee, I was fasting and praying because I was like, he going to trip up on this mic. You know what I'm saying? But he did great, man. But there was this one song I love. He like, rah, at the end of it, he does like screamo. And so he's doing like screamo. And he's like, some of these people are like, oh my gosh, what's happening? And when he got done, like when he got done with that song, right before he goes into another song, he goes, yeah, I used to jump and be in a heavy metal band if you couldn't tell. You know what I'm saying? It was just awesome. But man, straight up, Holy Ghost was moving in that place, man, and Resurrection Worship did their thing, and it was just straight killer, man, and, and it was just a, a great, great time to be with our family out in, uh, out in Columbia, so praise the Lord. Amen? God, man, we want to welcome y'all to Source Church, man. Praise God. Thank you so much for being here. We want to acknowledge uh, via Facebook Live our Source Church campus in Richmond. Hallelujah. We salute you guys in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And with that, man, we have a sister out there. Her name is uh, uh, Summer. Uh, we have been praying for her mama. Her mama did uh, end up being healed, ultimately. She went home to be with Jesus. So uh, praise God. But we're going to lift that family up. Amen. Father God, we thank you for being with Summer, God, and her beautiful family, my Lord Jesus. We just ask, God, that your peace that surpasses all understanding, God, just completely and 100% swamps her and her family, God. Lord, we just thank you right now, my Lord God, that you would give that family such a hope, my Lord Jesus, God, and knowing where mama went, my Lord God. She was in love with you, and God, we thank you so much for that because you were in love with her, my Lord Jesus. And God, we just uh, ask, my Lord God, that uh, Holy Spirit, you comfort them in their time of need, that you help them with every step that they have to take, counsel them with every decision that they need to make, my Lord God. And we thank you indeed that even in the midst of this passing and this death, my Lord Jesus, in the physical, God, we thank you that she has eternal life in the spiritual. But God, we thank you that in the physical death, my Lord God, that there is going to indeed come out life. So God, we just thank you and we praise you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. 
I was about to get started, man. Friday night also in, in uh, Source Church, Virginia Beach was awesome. Uh, my sister's uh, uh, best friend in the seventh grade, actually, her name was Ashita. She actually showed up, so that was super cool. She said, I remember coming upstairs and you was always playing in your room with your toys. I said, that's right, girl. Some things will never change. Praise the Lord. But, uh, <laughs> praise God. But, uh, but no, it was uh, just so, so uh, uh, cool to, uh, to see her. Guys, we're in our third week of our sermon series called The Simple Gospel. And to God be the glory, man, it's been awesome. We've been talking about how simple the gospel is, but yet how difficult the calling can be. Praise God. And uh, last week, if you guys were here, man, if not, then you need to watch it online because you missed an awesome one. Pastor uh, uh, Robert Flowers, thank you, Jesus, preached a phenomenal service about the lost colony. And I come with great news. The lost colony has been found because of it. (laughs) Praise God. So so thank you, Jesus. (laughs) So it's absolutely awesome. Man, praise the Lord. But, uh, but straight up, man, it was awesome. But we're going to go to uh, the Gospel of Matthew. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16. And uh, starting off at verse 24, I'm going to come out of the NIV. If you don't have a Bible, you want one, man. Our ushers would be more than willing and stoked and honored to get you one. If not, we have a couple of big Bibles that we're going to throw up here on the screen. And it says this. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. Now, I don't know about for you guys, but for me, denying myself has oftentimes been something that I struggle with. I like myself. (laughs) Like, I like myself a lot. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Sometimes a ridiculous amount, right? I like, I like the way I look. I'm 6'4", tar, dark, and handsome. You know what I'm saying? I could bench press about 450. You know what I'm saying? I can run like a gazelle. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I like myself, praise the Lord. But, uh, uh, but sometimes it's an issue when it comes to denying myself, right? You guys remember the uh, matching game? How you flip, have the little cards, you flip it. Uh, Elias loves the matching game. I have a, a begin to learn that I hate the matching game. Um, uh, it's a fun game nonetheless, but uh, Elias, my, my beautiful uh, wife, bought Elias a Paw Patrol matching game. And I had never in my life seen a matching game with a million pieces. I can't stand Paw Patrol anymore because of the matching game. Right, so he always wants to put out the matching game, and we got to find, you know, Rubble, and Rubble is in like six different outfits. It's like he's one dog. Does it matter if he's in this construction truck or this construction? I found a Rubble. That's it. You know what I'm saying? So it can actually become annoying, right? So I want the game to go faster because, again, there's a million pieces. So what I will begin to do, if I just find Rubble, it doesn't matter if it's the same. Hey, look, I found two Rubbles. Bam, I got a match. It's the same dog. Right? And so, and so I end up actually cheating to make the game go, <laughs> to make the game go a little bit faster. But I remember one time, I remember one time I, I, we go over, me and my beautiful bride go over to my in-law's house. And, and while we're there, uh, uh, one of my nieces, Sadie, is playing the matching game. And so right when I walk in, my pops in law is like, man, Sadie is like really good at this matching game. I was like, well, that's challenge number one, pops. Sadie's really good, and you got to tell me, like, I ain't really good at the matching game? <laughs> right? So instantly, in my mind, I'm like, okay, yeah, 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 that's, that's challenge number one. And then she pipes up, and she's like, yeah, Uncle, I am really good. I'm like, oh, challenge number two. You're trying to show yourself. You're four years old, honey. I am in my 30s. You're going to step to me. You're about to get crushed. You know what I'm saying? So it's like challenge number two. And I'm thinking to myself, man, if anybody, if anybody in here says one more thing, I'm straight shutting this little girl down. <laughs> I'm good at the matching game. And indeed, sure enough, man, a few seconds later, she's like, uncle, you should play with me. Let's go. Oh, honey, here's the issue. Uncle don't play. <laughs> I will go to war against you. I will challenge you to the highest if indeed that's what it is that you want to do. But make no mistake, uncle does not play. Right? So indeed, man, she's like, awesome. It's on. You know what I'm saying? It's like, wah, wah, wah. Ooh. Right? 
And so I'm like, yeah, girl, you know, lay out the pieces. Lay out the pieces. And man, I'm, I'm going into prayer. I'm like, Lord, you got to help me to deny myself. I am puffing up at this four-year-old little girl. <laughs> I'm like, what is going on with me, man? I am ready to punch her in the face. Going to challenge me. Going to step at me. Do you know me? You might be as tall as me, but honey, I fought a lot more than you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you better brace yourself, girl. Shucks, right? Coming at me like a dude. You're going to get treated like a dude. That's all I got to say. So, so she's, she's, putting out, she's putting out the pieces, man. And I'm like, Lord, please, God, you got to help me to deny myself. Why am I getting so upset? That this little girl challenging me. Like, I got to prove to my father-in-law that I could beat a four-year-old at, at guess who or match, whatever it is. Well, you playing Pops? Why ain't you playing Glenn? You know what I'm saying? So I'm thinking to myself, all right, man, Lord, come on, please help me. And it's like, you know, it's like, then it's like your good side's like, WWJD. What would Jesus do? Jesus would destroy her and then resurrect her. So that's what I will do. I will destroy her. I will ruin her. And then I'll tell her that she's such a good niece, right? So I'm like, man, I got this. I got this, right? I mean, her cuteness is trying to play tricks on me. And I'm like, man, I am not falling for it. And so, indeed, man, as, as, as we just begin to lay everything out, man, it happens. I'm like, I, I got to deny myself, man. I got to deny myself and give her this victory. And I couldn't. <laughs> Man, I couldn't. But here's the bad thing. I couldn't, I couldn't to the degree that I cheated. And I cheated because I didn't want her to get one single match. Tell me, how good are you, Sadie, at the matching game? You have zero. And what was horrible... What was horrible is when she would flip over two pieces and then they didn't match and you flip them back over. So mentally you're remembering, okay, uh, uh, this one was there and that one was there. When she wasn't looking, I would switch. Right? Isn't it? It's so bad. But the taste of victory is so good. Right? So as I'm doing that, man, and I would do that, and I'm thinking to myself, man, Frank, what are you doing? Deny yourself, bro. I'm not going to deny myself a victory. I don't know how to lose. You have to understand. So as I'm doing all this stuff, I then begin to coach her. I think that one was there, baby. Guess, guess not. But have any of you guys ever played the matching game like that before? Somebody said yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's the last thing. We got it from my mama. They get it from their mama. You know what I'm saying? Now, my dad was honorable. My dad was faithful. My dad served his country. My mom was a cheat. She was a right now I'm picking. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm just picking. But indeed, man, it's crazy. And I'm thinking like this through this matching game, but you can only imagine... Now I'm thinking, man, I can't even deny myself in a matching game. You can only imagine what Jesus' disciples had to felt. See, like, the thing is, is Jesus isn't asking us to deny ourselves of victory. Jesus is asking us ultimately to deny ourselves of life. To deny ourselves. Jesus rolls up on scene and he calls out the Fantastic Four. He's like, hey, guys. Follow me. Leave everything behind. Your professions, your possessions, your dreams, your visions, your family, your friends, your safety, your security. Leave everything behind and follow me. Jesus is challenging them to abandon everything they knew and everything they had to follow him. Jesus says that if you're going to follow me, then indeed you must deny yourself. Something that Jesus would repeat more than once. Something that Holy Spirit is telling me every single day. If you're going to follow, deny yourself. If you want me to use you to your capacity, deny yourself. 
You want to raise the dead? Deny yourself. Cast out demons? Deny yourself. Heal the sick? Deny yourself. Set captives free? Deny yourself. This is something that Jesus set out every single day. Why? To drive the point home. That if we can't deny ourselves in a matching game, how much difficulty are we going to have to deny ourselves to the world? A world, mind you, that is all about self. A world, mind you, that revolves around self. The most important person in self's world is self. Think about this. We must protect ourselves and promote ourselves and serve ourselves and entertain ourselves and comfort ourselves and take care of ourselves. Everything is about self. In this world, it's about self. And we have a world that is about self, and Jesus rolls in through this world, a community that's about self, and Jesus rolls into this community. And he says, lay down, deny, slay your self. Newsflash, Jesus. Do you even know what the world's about? It's about self. And you're coming in here now telling us to deny ourselves. But here's what's amazing. History will show us, man, that that's exactly what this fantastic four, these four fishermen indeed did. They paid the ultimate price for abandoning everything. To follow this man named Jesus, Peter crucified upside down, Andrew crucified in Greece, James beheaded, John exiled after, after he was dipped in oil, boiling oil. This is absolutely, you can only imagine as they begin to beat Simon Peter, knowing that they're getting ready to to hang him on a cross. And as they beat him and beat him and beat him, deny him, saying nothing. Deny him, say him nothing. And then they roll his his almost lifeless body over to nail him to a cross. You could get off the cross, Simon Peter, if indeed you just deny him. And what Simon Peter says is, can you flip me upside down? Because I'm not worthy enough to die like my Savior did. Denied himself. You can only imagine... When they were beating on James and laying him out and stretching his neck on the block. As they're touching his back of his neck with the sword, knowing that the sword's about to meet the back of his neck and his feet are getting ready to meet his face. And they say, James, doesn't have to be this way. You got a good head on your shoulders. All you have to do indeed is deny Jesus. And, and think about it. James is going, man, hey, can you guys speed this up? My feet have an appointment with my face. Right? right. right? That's dope, man. Denies himself. Andrew, you can save yourself. Deny him. Can't do it. They nail him up to the cross. Andrew, last chance. Deny him. He said, man, how can I deny the man that I just took on his image? Yeah, 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 yeah. And he wants me to let you know he loves you this much. I would deny myself, but I cannot deny him. And you got John. John, that oil is getting hot, bro. We're going to dip you in that oil unless you deny Jesus. And John's reply is, let's go skinny dipping. How dope is that, man? He says, man, I'm not going to deny I'm not going to deny my Savior. I will deny myself. Dip me. Do whatever it is that you want to do with me. But Jesus is Lord. And they all did this and so much more for Jesus, for you and me, for the gospel, the simple gospel. We have to begin to ask ourselves, how on earth does somebody get to this point in their walk that they are willing to deny their life To embrace that type of a death to follow Jesus. How does one truly become that type of a follower of Jesus? It's simple. Because the gospel is simple. Does anybody know that one of the first words in Jesus' ministry is? Repent. Jesus rose up on scene, man, talking repent for the kingdom of God is here. 
It's the same words that John the, Baptist, that John the Baptist used when he was preparing the way for the Messiah. Repent and be saved. See, the gospel is simple. Repentance, the word is the foundation of Christianity. It's the foundation of the book of Acts. You can't be a Christian without repentance. Holy Spirit's dutimous dynamite power can explode inside of us and out of us and be used the way that he wants to use us without repentance when peter is is preaching to the people about the death barrier and the resurrection of jesus when he's preaching to the people about how jesus came to die for their sins and the crowd is hooked and they're saying well then simon peter what do we have to do he says simple looks them dead in the eyes and says repent repent you want that bold walk repent and repentance is a is a is a, a fancy word that simply means that we've had a transformation in one's mind, in one's heart, in one's life. It means that we were going one way with sin, one way with the world, one way with self, and we did an instant U-turn and begin to go indeed with Jesus. Repentance. It means that we think differently, we believe differently, feel differently, love differently, live differently. Repentance. And this true repentance means that we deny ourselves to live for Christ. We are no longer denying Christ to live for ourselves. And when we begin to do that, amazing things happen. See, the gospel is simple. And truth be told, you know what I've, I begin to find out, man, is that Christians, so many Christians in the church, just simply believe that Christianity is merely being forgiven for our sins. And it's kind of a slap to the gospel, although that's important. But it's sad that we think that that's the only thing that it is. And many of us stay there, forgiveness. We dwell there, forgiveness. We're stuck there, forgiveness. Believing that, well, Jesus, you know, he, he cleansed me from all of life's sins. But yet we are lacking the true, radical, authentic life changing that comes through repentance because before we could have forgiveness in a sense we have repentance but what's crazy is we have already been forgiven just many people aren't repenting and he says repentance and see it saddens me because so many people are hooked on the forgiveness thing but yet they're living in bondage, although they've been forgiven. And while they're living in bondage, because they have no repentance. Yep. He says, repent. Repent. Jesus, John the Baptist, Peter, repent. Yeah. Repent. Amen. Repent. There's more to Jesus than just forgiveness. Yeah. And here's the amazing thing. There's more to Jesus than just repentance. See, because after we are forgiven, after we repent, we're forgiven. And, and after that, man, we'll fill with Holy Spirit. Amen. Scripture says that God will give us a new heart. He'll put a new spirit, thank you, Lord, inside of us. Yeah. It's his spirit in us that moves us, that prompts us to follow his commands. Yeah. And when we are sold out, when we have committed and submitted our life to Christ Jesus, when he is our source of life, that source of life becomes the center of our life. Yeah. And this is the heart's cry of Jesus. When he says to the, to the fantastic four, when he says to you and me, hey, guys, let's roll. Follow me and deny yourselves. See, when we become a true Christian, a true follower of Jesus, when we are willing to honestly follow him, that means we die to everything we were before Jesus. The things that we used to think were fun, the things that we used to do, man, we're now denying those things. Anything that was dishonorable to Jesus, man, we are now denying those things. And it's so crazy to think that Jesus Christ died for us, so indeed that he can live in us. And what's cool, man, is when the Holy Spirit dwells in us, what I love about it, is he's not repairing the old us. He's not repairing that. Praise the Lord. He says, man, I ain't got time for the repair. I'm in the new business. Your car been in an accident. I ain't going to repair it. I'm going to get you a new one. Right? And that's what he does, man. He says that the old is what? Gone. 
The new is here. And he is the new inside of us. Everything that is him becomes us. Righteousness. His righteousness replaces our unrighteousness. His holiness replaces our unholiness. His fullness fills our emptiness. His love becomes our love. His joy becomes our joy. His hope becomes our hope. His will becomes our will. The one that I pray for every single day, God, is your mind becoming my mind because my mind is sick, twisted, and wicked. So, Lord Jesus, I need your mind. And do you know why disciples before us and disciples after us will lay their life down for Jesus? Because his purpose becomes our purpose. See, we got to understand, man, this Christian life is not about self. It's about him and it's about them. As a Christian, a true follower of Christ, what we need to be doing daily is outpouring the indwelling of Holy Spirit that is in us. We need to be pouring that out every single day. That's what it means to be a follower of Christ. And that only comes with repentance. So my question is, are you following Jesus? Like, for real, following Jesus. Not like you're following him just because you got behind him for a second. Right? Yeah. But I'm talking about like the real, authentic following Jesus. Well, how do I know? Are you willing to risk everything? Are you willing to lose every one? Are you willing to lay down your life to deny yourself? That's following Jesus. Yeah. See, yeah. the fantastic four men, they believed that following Jesus was 100% worth it. These men heard the call, hey, follow me. And with bold steps, they followed Jesus. They found what they were looking for. Right? So going to a song right now, but I'm not going to. (laughs) Right? I was drawing a blank on the song. That's why I wasn't going to go into it. Holy Ghost. Right? Right? But they found, when they saw him, they found what they were looking for. When they heard him, they found what they were looking for, right? And with such boldness, they were willing to go. We have to begin to ask ourselves, in Jesus, have we found everything we're looking for? When we hear his voice, are we hearing everything we're looking for? And if so, and you haven't followed him, I have to begin to question why. It's not Jesus. And if you say yes, then I have to believe indeed that you are straight up following him like the Fantastic Four did. That you are so willing to lose everything. Think about this, man. They came to the conclusion that the only thing that honestly and truly matters is Jesus. And when we can come to that conclusion that the only thing that honestly and truly matters is Jesus... Then that means we're following him on his heels like tar, baby. Come on, somebody. And I don't even like UNC, but I just put that plug for you guys. Your pastor loves you. Thank you, Jesus. (laughs) Right? But we are going to be on him, man. That's a true follower of Jesus. So are we willing to lose everyone for Christ? And if so, then that means, man, we'd honestly be following Jesus. But let's be real for a second. Simon, Peter, Andrew, James, John. Do we honestly think that at this moment that Jesus called them, that they were comprehending, that they were completely understanding everything that they were getting ready to get themselves into? Like when Simon, Peter, and Andrew dropped their nets, do we honestly think that he was like, sweet, I'm dropping my nets. I'm going to get crucified upside down. (laughs) right no you know they didn't james and john stepping out of out of pops's boat hey pops rather get my head cut off (laughs) no man right but what they did understand is there was something about jesus That I'm willing to walk away from everything i've known i'm willing to walk away from my safety net I'm willing to walk away from my occupation. I'm willing to walk away from security and everything. And indeed, follow this man named Jesus. 
That's what they did understand. Getting crucified and deep fried and everything else, man. Truth be told, they did not understand, right? And we could begin to ask ourselves, man, do we honestly, do you go back and forth, man, do we think that they honestly understood? Yeah, no, maybe so. And you know what? It doesn't matter. You know why? That was over 2,000 years ago. What they did over 2,000 years ago makes a hill of beans to you right now. You're not going to get into heaven. You're not going to repent because they did. You can't follow Jesus just simply because they did. And they didn't follow Jesus for you. They followed Jesus for Jesus. They followed Jesus for themselves. They're just an awesome example for you. What does matter, however, is what we do now. What we do understand, what we do know. Whether we think they understood it or not, we have the advantage. People say all the time, man, I wish I could have walked with Jesus. Shucks, I thank you, Lord, that I was born in 1979. (laughs) Praise the Lord. You know what I'm saying? They didn't have a cheat manual. We do. Look at the end of the book. We win. Hello. Right? (laughs) I'm glad. I am blessed. I am honored that he placed me here when he placed me here. Praise the Lord. What we do know, what we know, is what Jesus is calling us to do. Right? We know that Jesus is calling us to deny everything. To leave our possessions and our positions and our dreams and our visions. To leave our families and to deny our families and, and, and our friends. To, to, to leave that safety net and that security. To abandon everything to follow him. We do know that that's what Jesus Christ is calling us to do. So my question is, will we do it? I mean, can you imagine? you just at, at work one day, man, you love your job. Some people are like, no, I can't imagine. <laughs> but you love your job, man, great job. And someone just comes rolling up, man. You're in a, you're in a great job, high-ranking position, right? Making great money. You got a vision for your life. You got a wonderful family. Other people's like, oh, you lost me there. <laughs> you got a wonderful family, right? Great friends. Everything is going awesome for you. You're safe. Come on. You, you know, you go to work Monday through Friday and chill out at home on Saturday and you go to church on Sunday and Drop your ties in the bucket and a couple of hallelujahs. But then you're back doing whatever it is that you want to Monday through Friday. But man, you're secure. You're safe. And then someone rolls up on you and talking about some, hey. Yeah? And abandon everything. Hmm. Abandon it all and, and what? I'm going to abandon all this. You see my new truck? <laughs> Want me to abandon all that? For what? To follow me. Huh? <laughs> to follow you? Who are you? Yeah, right. Can you imagine that? But you know what's so awesome? That's what they did. Yeah. That's exactly what they did. Why? Because when they had that encounter with Jesus, you've got to remember, some of them had the encounter with Jesus before. Right. Because John said... Behold, the Lamb of God. He's going to be the one that's going to take away the sins of the world. And remember, a couple of them begin to follow him. Jesus, what what, what do you say? What are you doing? Follow me, you'll see. Right. And here he is, telling these guys to follow him. That's what they did because they had the real, true, authentic encounter with love himself. And it was a love that radically changed them from the inside out. They finally were embraced with a love that was worth losing everything else for because they found this love. They found the satisfaction that the world could never give them. They found the ultimate high that drugs would never give them. They found the ultimate satisfaction that sex would never deliver. Right? They found everything when they had an encounter with Jesus. They found something that was worth far more than silver or gold. They found something that money would never be able to purchase. They found Jesus. Jesus found them. Come and follow me. Oh my gosh. 
Yes. Right? Yes, Lord. They were eager, willing, glad to lay down their lives in order to truly follow, to truly proclaim the name of Jesus. The problem is, we see what it truly means to follow Jesus. We see in the footsteps of Jesus what it means to imitate him. We see what it, in the footsteps of the disciples, what it means to follow him. But somewhere from then to 2,000 years later, like I said the other week, man, we've gotten off the path. What's ever popular, what's ever trendy in the church, even or in the world, but even in the church, will begin to adopt. Now listen, I believe, praise the Lord, I don't believe that we are supposed to shun the world and do nothing with the world. The world is darkness. <laughs> right? I believe, man, that we're supposed to be in the world, just not of the world. Hello. Praise the Lord. But how is the world ever going to see Jesus if we're hiding behind our church fortresses? You know what I'm saying? So indeed, we have to get out there. But what begins to happen is the church begins to minimize the deity of Jesus. We begin to feminize the authority of Jesus. And indeed, we begin to weaken the power of Holy Spirit. That's what takes place, just like the world. That's what the world wants to do to the church, and unfortunately, that's what the church does to itself. We make following Jesus a suggestion and or a joke, but not a necessity. We make the gospel into just a handful of stories, but that's really about it. We make following him. We've deceived people into following him as simply saying a short little prayer at the inner service or in a circle with your pals. And indeed, that means you're following Jesus. But you know what? When I look at the lives of the Fantastic Four, when I look at Peter and, and Andrew and James and John, when I, when I look at uh, 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 um, the disciples, when I look at uh, uh, mighty men like Watchman Lee, yeah. when, I look like, when I look at many, my, mighty men like Jim Elliott, their lives not only tell me but show me that the calling to follow Jesus is not simply an invitation for a prayer. But they tell me and they show me that to follow Jesus is an invitation to die. That's what they show me. Who in here is honestly willing to die for Jesus? Why would we honestly begin to think that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus called his disciples to deny everything, lay your life down, pick up your cross and follow me. Why would we think that it was anything less for us? Why would we think that we wouldn't have to be doing the things that the early church was doing, that the disciples were doing? Why do we think that Jesus would call them to sacrifice, but yet call us only to receive the blessings? Right? Because we've got it twisted. And I get it, the cost of following Jesus, man, is pricey, it's high. And the problem is, is we live in a society where we're always trying to bargain. We're always trying to make a deal. God, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, God. I'm going to go to church if you dot, dot, dot. You know what, God? I see that silver bucket, and it's coming my way. Ties and offerings. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to offer you up a deal right now. I'll throw in a couple of bills. I won't get the app out the church. I'll just go for the dinner. But I'll throw in my app money if you dot, dot, dot. And what we begin to do is we begin to bargain like we're on the streets of Chinatown in New York City. It's fun there. But, but we begin to bargain with God like God is a vendor. Yeah. Right? Like we're on the game show. Let's make a deal. Behind door number one, you can offer up your life. Or you can pick door number two, and it's to sacrifice your life. But this is no fun. <laughs> can I have another one? I'll just take the money. <coughs> right? 
And it's great. And that's the things that we actually begin to do, the cost to follow Jesus, church. We can't lie. It's pricey. It will cost you everything. Church has got it wrong for so many years. Give yourself to Jesus. It's free. No, it's not. It's not free. What he did for us was free. Hallelujah. But to give your life to Jesus is not free. It will cost you your life to truly be that disciple of Christ Jesus. Dying is hard. The willingness to die is hard. The willingness to deny yourself to a four-year-old little girl in match game is difficult. So how much more is it difficult in the real world? The calling is high, and unfortunately, so many will avoid it. We're going to be wrapping up here shortly, I promise. But Matthew 7, uh, uh, 13 through 14 says this, there are two paths before you. You may take only one path. One doorway is narrow, and the other door is wide. Go through the narrow door. See, I I love that. He's he's letting us know right here. Check this out. These 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 are your options. Go through the narrow door. I gave you your options, and now I'm telling you what's the best one. (laughs) Hello. You know what I mean? So he he lays it down, and he says, For the wide door leads to a wide path, and the wide path is broad, and the wide path is broad, the path is easy, and the wide, broad, easy path has many, many people on it. But the wide, broad, broad, easy, crowded path leads to death now then (laughs) it's got everybody's intention it leads to death now then oh yay forgot about the narrow door he says the narrow door leads to a narrow road that in turn leads to life it is hard to find that road not many people manage it Woo. Not many people manage to find that road. The wide door is so inviting. Everybody, come on. This is the nice door. Look how wide it is. Right? The wide door means it's welcoming. It's comforting. The narrow door, on the other hand, mm mm-hmm. Looks like a cult. <laughs> right? right? Yeah. I wouldn't go. You see those doors? They're painted black. <laughs> Black's not inviting. The wide doors are red. Red means welcome. Right? And, and that's what the enemy begins to do, man, right? He's like, man, check this out. The wide door is so attractive, it's so beautiful to anyone and everyone who looks at it, and again, all, all welcome. All can fit. And you know what's so amazing about the wide door? It's your way. It's your way all the time. The narrow door, where it is on the street, you got to do it the narrow door way. (laughs) It's your way here. Right? And, and man, it's like so appetizing to so many people, right? He's like, yeah, man, this, this wide door is accommodating to everyone. After all, don't we coexist? Mm, <laughs> Scratch it off your car. Scratch it off your car. Please, yes. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> he's like, man, just, <laughs> he's like, just walk through it. Come on, it'll be fun. I'll go with you. Everybody is doing it. Listen to me. The wide door is a one-time decision to follow Jesus. And when you come in, we'll all get together. We'll sing Kumbaya, and we're going to say a prayer. You don't have to worry about his commandments. They're optional. Secret that the church don't tell. You don't have to worry about his standards. Come on, who has standards? You don't have to worry about his glory. Look at you. You're shining, boo. You're shining. You got your own glory. 
<laughs> right? And nickname you Morning Glory. Come on, somebody. <laughs> right? And he says, just come through this door. And the moment that you come through this door, it's like the things at the subways when you walk through and, and you get your ticket. You got your ticket to heaven. Come through the wide door. Indeed, it's your path. The wide door. There is no sin. Because everybody is right. In the wide, wide door, it's whatever makes you happy. So come on, come to the wide door. You know indeed is inviting it sounds good. The wide door feels good. The wide door looks good. But listen to me. Real talk, that's when Holy Spirit interrupts. But the wide door is no good. Yeah. The wide door will not lead you to Jesus, but indeed it will lead you to a path of destruction. It will lead you to death. Go through the narrow... Which way do I go, Lord? Just let me know. Go through the narrow door. Oh, Lord, there's a wide door and there's a narrow door, Lord. Which way do I go? The wide door is death. So t- look at it. It's so pretty. The wide door is left. Which way do I go then, Lord? The narrow door. <laughs> How many times I got to tell you? Right? Lord, I'm so dull. Give me a two by four. <laughs> okay. Death, life. There's your two by four. <laughs> Which one do you want? Right? He says, indeed, go to the uh, narrow door. And I love this. The narrow door is uncomfortable to walk through. Yeah. When you're going through the narrow door, oftentimes you're going to even begin to wonder, will I fit? The narrow door is hard. The word that Jesus actually uses that is attached to the narrow door uh, 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 um, um, parable that he's talking about is associated with pain, pressure, tribulation, and persecution. When you walk through the narrow door, you're going to have pain. You're going to have pressure. Lord, right now you're not really winning me with the narrow door. I just got to <laughs> throw that out there. You're going to have tribulation and persecution. Wide door or narrow door? Well, there was my two by four. (laughs) Right? So indeed, which one will we pick? Are we willing to follow Jesus? Right? That's the question that we have to ask ourselves. Are we willing to follow Jesus? Because the truth be told, to follow Jesus is hard. And many people will not do it. And what we will begin to do is we will take a step back from the church and we will weaken the church. Slowly but surely, we will weaken the church. We will take the Jesus of the Bible and try our best to twist and to to mold him into something a little bit more comfortable. We will sugarcoat and we will dilute and we will water down what he says because after all, we don't want to offend anybody. We will sugarcoat, we will water down and we will dilute what it means to follow him because after all, I don't want to offend myself. Right? And this is what happens. We will begin to pick and choose the things we like in his teachings so that we can begin to mold him. And what ha- ends up happening is we end up with this sweet, nice, non offensive, politically correct, uh, a middle class American, white, blue eyed man with a mullet who is a sissy. <laughs> Hello. And talking about, man, we're going to follow him. You wouldn't follow him if he was in front of you walking into Food Lion. (laughs) Right? And we're talking about, indeed, we're going to follow him. No, we're not. But praise God. Jesus is not open to be customized. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. He cannot be customized. He cannot be personalized. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, don't follow us. We follow Jesus. If I got my worship team up, and when and if, or let me say that, thank you, Holy Spirit. When, not if. His word begins to offend 
begins to convict, begins to confront the assumptions that we hold in our life. When it begins to convict and confront our beliefs, when it begins to uh, 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 convict and confront our convictions and or the lack thereof, the way that we treat our families, the way that we treat our friends, when his word confronts, convicts, The way that we blend in with the culture and don't try to heal the culture. When he confronts us about not going to church but being the church but yet we're never at church. But when he confronts us, convicts us, at that moment will we choose to repent? Will we honestly choose to follow him? Because the truth be told, until we realize that Jesus is better than all the pleasures. That Jesus is better than anything that we could pursue. That Jesus is better than all the possessions in the world combined. Until we begin to realize that, we won't truly follow Jesus. But when we do realize that, then understand me, no matter how narrow the door is, Nothing, nor nobody, no devil, no demon, no man, no woman will ever knock us off of that path. It will be impossible. We will not be persuaded because we will indeed lay down our lives to follow Jesus. And when we do that, we will have that true encounter with the love A love that will truly begin to change us from the inside out. And it will begin to cause us to love God and to love God's people that we once hated. It will cause us to hate the things of the world that we once loved. Come on, somebody. That was the only way that I was able to beat my addictions with sin. When Holy Spirit began to change my ways, I could try so long are so hard I'm gonna stop looking at porn I'm gonna stop being a pervert I'm gonna stop doing this next thing you know I'm porning it up and perverting it up the only way that it was ever able to stop is when Holy Spirit changed me from the inside out and the very things that I once used to love he began to develop a hatred towards and then here's what's awesome after I had to completely get away for it You know what he's done now? I no longer have a hatred towards it or anybody who's in it. He has given me a compassion. A desire to help people who are bound in pornography. A passion to help people who are bound in perversion. To set them free. Just like indeed I was set free. But you know when that only happened? It only happened when I truly repented. And when I truly repented, man, my life 100% changed. The only way, the only way that we will ever be able to break our addictions, our struggle with sin, that appetite, if you would, for the pleasures of the world, is when we begin to allow Holy Spirit to change our appetite. So he says, I am the bread of life and I am the living water. And he lets us know in John, man, that uh, when we go to him, we will hunger no more. When we go to him, we will thirst no more. He has changed our appetite. And when he changes our appetite, we're free. We've been forgiven. We've repented. Our appetites changed. We are no longer bound to the poisonous food in the spiritual. But I've been set free. The gospel is simple. The calling is hard. Oftentimes difficult. Sin does its best to conquer us, but through repentance, through Christ Jesus, indeed, we will conquer sin. So I end with this. Last question. Are you a follower of Jesus? Because a follower of Jesus looks like him, not the world. 
Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. Jesus, we praise you. We love you, Lord. You are so amazing. And we just honestly, Lord, want to give you the glory for indeed pulling us out of what it is that you pulled us out of. God, I thank you, Jesus, that I once had a hunger for the things of the world, God. But Lord, now you have uh, developed in me a hunger for you. I thank you, God, that I'm not changed on the outside in, God, but I was changed on the inside out. And I thank you, God. I thank you that I had that encounter, just like the Fantastic Four, God, that encounter with love that radically changed my world forever. And God, now that you changed my world, send me out so that I may help in changing the world. God, one soul, one person, one salvation, one repentance at a time, my Lord. And God, I thank you for each part that you allow me to play. And there's anybody in here who don't know Jesus and you want to, we get to repent. Nope, this prayer is not going to save you. But asking Jesus into your heart, our Holy Spirit into your heart, Jesus to forgive you of your sins. Repentance. Isn't just something we say. Repentance is something that we do. We're going to say it because Paul tells us to confess it. Then we're going to do it because Paul tells us to believe it. So we're going to say the repentance. Then we're going to live the repentance. We're going to do a U-turn in the way of the life that we've been doing. We're going to turn from the things that we've been involved with in that are not of God. We're going to live different, think different, believe different, love different. Right here, right now. If that's you, you want that. Open up your heart. Say, Jesus... I'm a sinner in the need of a savior and there's only one it's you so I thank you for forgiving me I thank you that your ears heard my sinner's heart and God you've given me you've granted me you've gifted me repentance so Lord help me to live different love different believe different walk different talk different Lord I want all of you and I will give you all of me use me I'm going through the narrow door because the wide door ain't got nothing for me and all God's baby said hallelujah church stand to your feet pray